We're on a road trip today. This is a little bit different kind of video from what we normally do. And I apologize for the quality of the video and the sound, but we're on the road. We're driving along a levee here, going from West Sacramento down to the little Delta community of Isleton along the Sacramento River. And we're gonna pick up an air gun collection there. The, uh, the collection was a, from a guy named Charlie. I think Charlie uh, Toronto or something like that. He was a plumber, lived in Rio Vista, uh, not too far from here. And uh, Charlie went by the name, uh, nickname of Air Gun Charlie. So he would buy air guns and um, add them into his collection, so to speak. And he wasn't really a collector in the traditional sense that, um, you know, you buy a specimen and then when you see a better one, you buy that one and divest yourself of the other one. Or maybe you collect different variants of a particular gun. Well, Charlie was more of an accumulator. He just bought them all. 2013, I was on my way to the Pacific Air Gun Expo, and I stopped by and visited Charlie there in Isleton, I mean Rio Vista. And what he had done is he'd taken his garage and converted it into kind of a collection room. He had uh, racks on the walls, and there were uh, air rifles filling the racks, and he had a cabinet full of pistols, I think, and if I remember right, he had an old recliner and he would sit in the garage there and I guess he maybe watch TV or whatever and look at his collection. And well then a couple of years later, uh, Charlie passed away and left the collection to his family. All right, well we made it to uh, Isleton. There's the bridge over the river. And uh, let's see, the, um, there's the farm where the uh, collection's been stored. And here's a collection. It's in the, one of the shop buildings out uh, in back of the ranch house there. And those boxes are full of air guns. The boat doesn't come with it. Another view uh, of the uh, nine boxes that we ended up uh, picking up. I had some help loading. <laughs> we filled up our back seat with stuff. And then we've got the back of the pickup full of these boxes. And we'll open those up when we get home and take a look at them. See what we got. All right, we got the uh, collection here to uh, World Headquarters at Northwest Air Guns. And uh, this is box six and box seven. Uh, and let's see what else do we got here. This is, I'm holding this camera by hand, so it's kind of a not a real good uh, video, but here's a bunch of literature, um, several boxes of literature that uh, air gun digests and catalogs and stuff like that. All right, here's the other one, two, three, four, five, seven boxes here. Uh, and they're full of air guns or related uh, things. And uh, we'll be going through these uh, probably a box at a time because it takes a little while to go through a box and uh, seeing what we have. Uh, the idea here is that uh, some of these air guns I'll keep uh, for my own collection, you know, ones I don't have or, uh, you know, better specimens than I've got or, um, you know, just things that are of interest. But um, the rest of it, I imagine we'll put up for sale as soon as we know what we've got and uh, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to go about that. Uh, check back here, we'll probably go through some of these boxes a little at a time uh, and show what's in them. I think that would be fun, a lot of people might be interested in that. And then uh, we'll start figuring out how to uh, dispose of these. I'd like to find good homes uh, for what I don't end up keeping. Well, part of the uh, package of this collection that I bought included um, some publications. And there wasn't a lot of publications, but there were some. Uh, and I'm going to go through a few of them here that I found of interest. Um, this is from 1976 by Air Rifle Headquarters. And this is not the uh, Jim McCary Air Rifle Headquarters that uh, is operating now but this was Robert Law's Air Rifle Headquarters. 
uh, which was America's foremost air gun specialty shop since 1963, according to uh, Robert Law. And it, it's kind of fun to take a look at this. Um, this is their 1976 catalog. And let's see here, I marked some pages. Um, here you go. All you've ever wanted to know about air guns for fun or serious target shooting, but didn't know who to ask. And expert answers your questions. And the expert, of course, is Robert Law. And there he is right there, editor and ARH, or Air Rifle Headquarters president. And not just these uh, catalogs. Well, you can see HW35, uh, what was the price on it? HW35, the basic model was 15650 uh, on sale for 134.50. Well, I, I'd buy several probably at that price. But there was, it wasn't just the catalog, and they, they had other things in the catalog, uh, all of the different accessories and stuff. Uh, they talked about the shop services that they offered, and uh, some stuff like that. But the, before that, they used to publish these at the Air Rifle Headquarters, the uh, Air Rifle Monthly. And this is from 1968, uh, Volume 13. So they must have published in 1967 and maybe 66, I don't know. But these were put out on a monthly basis, uh, I think, to keep people interested and, and to address issues that would, you know, come across his desk, special technical series begins with this issue, answers to over 150 most frequently asked questions, covered in depth by the world's foremost air arm authority. So he was the world's foremost um, air arm authority. And these would be questions I think he would basically ask himself. You know, how do you pinpoint the breech seal as guilty among other suspect parts? He's talking about a leakage around breech seals on uh, spring piston guns. And then he answers his own question. So we have that um, fine work bow issue, a special Viroc issue. Now, they didn't have all the Virocs we have now. They had the 30, uh, what, 30, 35, 50, and 55. Special fun with an air gun issue. And so he put these out. Uh, and this had to take an awful lot of effort to do this on a monthly basis, uh, 55N handbook. Because um, there's a lot of material in here. And he went into some how to strip internal accurization and disassembly of a, uh, I'm not sure, this must have been the uh, 55N uh, Viroc handbook. And he goes through about disassembly of some of the different models of uh, Viroc guns. Technical issue. So this was kind of fun um, to look through these and see, you know, through the prism of 1969 uh, where air gunning was at the, at the time. This is a uh, Sheridan um, catalog. It's probably one of the last ones that they put out before uh, being purchased by Benjamin. And they were still there on Sheridan Road in Racine, Wisconsin. And there was something about this that caught my eye. Uh, what the heck? Oh, here it is. Okay. I thought this was kind of funny um, that they're showing a you know, a kid shooting his brand new Sheridan. And look at the target up here on the wall. It's got to be about, uh, what is it? Five by seven, something like that. So, I mean, don't we all put these little targets up on our walls and shoot in the living room? You know, what could go wrong there? But uh, anyway, part of the literature that we got out of the collection. Crossman stuff. Okay, this is the 160, and I don't know what the date on this is. It must be early 1960s, a price of $19.95, or 
available in Canada at slightly higher prices. So the thing is, for 1995, you would get the most amazing gun of its type ever developed. And that's pretty impressive, you know, for 20 bucks. I'm going to run through about half of this first box, which is box number seven, and just kind of show what we've got going on here. Um, oh, there's several of these kind of things. This is a paintball pistol that uh, Sheridan used to put out. They used to have these for originally for foresters as they walked through the woods and they were marking trees that would be cut and other trees that would stay. And it didn't take them long to start having paintball fights with them. Yeah, this is actually a Benjamin Sheridan model PGP. And anyway, that's kind of where paintball came from uh, originally was uh, from these guns. And somebody figured out it was fun to shoot other people with paintballs. Now this is kind of an oddball here. Uh, this is called an Oklahoma. And so for any of you Okies out there that have been looking for your gun, well, I guess here it is. It's got your state on it. It says made in Italy, though, which seems odd to me, by uh, Mondial, M-O-N-D-I-A-L. So you can see the grips are kind of messed up here. I know nothing about this gun. Got out. This is a marksman. Uh, this is the... Uh, um, what the heck model is this? Plainsman, it's a marksman plainsman. So this is different than the health ways, but you can kind of see maybe the lineage is the same. You look at the triggers and the uh, slide here, the grip, the uh, trigger guard, the barrels, everything, they're almost the same. It's just this was by Healthways, and then this is one by um, by Marksman, and it's in good shape. It's a really nice shape. Has the uh, end cap here. Safety's the same. Nice gun. Okay, then we have another um, bolt gun. This is the 22 model 116, I think it is. Yeah, 116. It's got some nice grips on it. These don't look like they're professionally made. Looks like somebody homemade them. And we're missing a screw on this side. But otherwise, it looks like it's in nice shape. Again, somebody refinished this. Another um, Crossman. This is the Model 150. And somebody refinished this. I don't know, maybe Charlie uh, refinished these because they all have this kind of slick... Um, slick, uh, glossy look to them. Uh, I don't know if this one works. Um, and we'll just have to play with it and find out. But that's, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, nice looking gun. Let's see, the ubiquitous 1377, the American classic. Uh, most of the ones I see are, are you know, they get rusted up. This one takes air. Uh, we got a serial number. We can figure out when it was made, but a uh, nice looking gun. It's in good shape. And then uh, something, we got the uh, Sheridan CO2 model EB CO2 pellet gun in the box, actually, with uh, parts diagram and whatnot, uh, the uh, owner manual, and there's the gun. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, this has not been refinished, but it doesn't look like it's been abused. Uh, this is, doesn't say where it's made. E-Series made in USA. But it's got a serial number, so we'll be able to... F oh, Sheridan Products, Inc. It doesn't say where it was made. But anyway, this is a nice find here. This is a nice looking gun and in good shape. So happy to, happy to get that one. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Well, no, we'll go through one more batch of guns and clear out this box number six. I don't know what this is. The GAT. Um, it looks like a gun 
You know, made in England, I guess. I, I, yeah, made in England. I don't know what it is. But it uh, comes in the box. We got darts, we got pellets, we got corks. Um, I'm not sure what this is, but I'll, I'll do a little research and try and figure it out. Yeah, it's a corker. So there's that one. Uh, let's see here. This is a Plainsman, a, or a, a Western Plainsman. This is by the same Healthways people, but it's missing the uh, cover for this side of the hand grip. So if you have a hand grip, let me know, or if you have a hand grip and want to buy the gun, let me know, and we'll work something out. Um, but anyway, there's that one. Let's see what else do we have? I don't know why, but there's so many paintball-looking guns in this collection. Here's a. Uh, let's see here. This one on the right looks to me to be a Crossman, but there's no markings on here at all. It says it's a Crossman. Um, doesn't say what model it is, but I mean that looks like paintball to me. And I think it's CO2, so uh, you can see the sights have come off, but you know, for paintball, I don't know that that matters. And then there's another one here. This is the, uh, where was this? Um, you know, I thought this was a Sheridan, but it, it's not. It's uh, power line is the gr on the grip, which would mean it's a daisy, but it doesn't have any markings on it. So I, you know, I really don't know what this is. Um, I'll have to take a look at it and try and figure out who made it. And yeah, If you know anything about this gun, uh, let me know. This is number 82. It says Nell Spot, whatever that is, 007. So if you know something about that, uh, drop me a note. It's got the uh, ubiquitous uh, Daisy 717. Um, had that. I've got, I don't know how many of those. Uh, let's see, Powerline. This is actually a, the Powerline 790, and it's a fairly hefty gun. Uh, it's a CO2. This is the, uh, similar to the, uh, what was it, the S&W 79, I think it was, um, Smith & Wesson. And then Smith & Wesson sold this line to Daisy, who changed it a little bit and came out with the 790. And I forget what the uh, 22 was uh, branded. But these are, these are nice guns, very accurate. Let's see what else. Last in this batch is this one. This is the uh, uh, Crossman. Uh, sport pistol, SSP, silhouette sport pistol. SSP. So this was kind of a target gun in its day, a CO2 target gun, and pretty accurate. And this one's in real good shape. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's the lo loading port here, uh, still intact, which is nice. So um, I don't know if it holds gas, but this is uh, really a nice gun. Okay, so that concludes a real quick look at uh, box number six. So anyway, thanks for watching and check back as we get back into the other boxes.